Good afternoon, Pio Nation. I hope you're having a great day so far. My name is Matt Williamson, and you're watching Married Ecology Sports. So in a matter of moments, our League of Legends team will be going up against Lewis University as part of the College League of Legends tournament. Uh, the other day, they went up against Manchester as part of the GLEC, and they fell 0-2. to two. So we're going to see what adjustments have been made, and hopefully we can come off with a, a victory against uh, Lewis. Uh, we're still waiting for things to get set up in the lobby. So while we are waiting for that, uh, we're going to take a look at the lineup for the League of Legends team. So in the top lane, uh, we have, I'm trying to get a couple things set up at the same time here, but uh, in the top lane, we have Aaron Nee, uh, MC, Lyco Stradiata. Uh, in the jungle, we have Kyler Wheeler, Raelic. In the mid lane, we have sophomore Leo Witsakowski, and Yuki, one, two, three, four, five. And AD Carey. We have uh, senior Ian Darling, Brimstone Bro, and then at support, we have freshman Bethany Holstein, Maxibu, uh, 101. Uh, so right now, the, Pioneer, the League of Legends team is overall 3-3. Three and three. Uh, So uh, they're 2-1 in the GLDC, and they are 1-2 well, and two in uh, Seelol. Uh, so we're going to see how today's match goes. Let me just double check one thing real quick to make sure everything's correct. Okay, that is correct. All right. Uh, a couple of announcements while we are waiting for uh, everyone to get in. I know we mentioned some of these things earlier today, but uh, tomorrow is a really busy day for, uh, for our stream and for our esports program. We got a, a couple of things uh, going on with our program and with the campus. Uh, so the first thing that we have is we are going to be uh, hosting a Rocket League tournament for high school students, especially those that are affiliated with Esports Ohio. Uh, so you can definitely check it out starting at 10 a.m. Uh, the teams have already been registered. We're getting brackets set up and we're going to get the information to the, the schools very soon. So that will be tomorrow. So you can definitely check that out. That's starting at 10 a.m. Uh, the following Sunday, we'll be hosting a League of Legends tournament for Esports Ohio. And then the week after that, uh, we will be hosting an Overwatch tournament. And there are scholarships up for grabs for participating. You automatically get a $1,500 scholarship if you decide to attend Merida College. And if you win any of the tournaments, you would receive a $2,000 uh, scholarship for attending Merida College. This is only for Esports Ohio students, though, unfortunately. Uh, so if you are a part of that, uh, we definitely hope you would uh, be able to join us. Uh, also tomorrow is... Not only it's Valentine's Day, but it is the day that Marietta Co College was chartered to commemorate this event. This is going to be our annual day of giving. Uh, so starting at 12.01 a.m., you may be able to give a gift uh, to Marietta College. You can choose what that gift goes towards, whether it's the Marietta Fund to provide scholarships and for our students and funding opportunities for our faculty, whether you give uh, funding to a particular academic department, uh, you could give something to the athletic program or a specific athletic team. I know they've been working very hard this semester. We'll have all their teams compete uh, in, uh, in all their sports. Or of course you can uh, give something towards the esports program to help us with equipment and opportunities for our players. So for more information, you can go to uh, marietta.edu slash day dash of dash giving. Uh, also, just to give an update on the match schedule. So we've already had quite a few matches this week. Uh, of course, right now we're going to be seeing our match with uh, Lewis very soon. They're starting to get into the lobby. But uh, tomorrow, not only are we going to be hosting a Rocket League tournament, but we will have one more match for you at 8.30 p.m. when our Overlock Overwatch team will be going up against a very good uh, Lords team. You've we've played Lords several times. They have a very strong Overwatch uh, roster, uh, so be sure to uh, come by Sunday evening to check that out. And then the last thing that I will mention is that if you are a Marietta College student, we're always looking for more people to join our esports program. If you're a high school senior and not affiliated with Esports Ohio, we still have scholarship opportunities for you. Uh, so we do give scholarships for our League of Legends, Overwatch, Rocket League, and Rainbow Six Siege teams. So if you're interested in trying out for one of our scholarships, uh, all you have to do is fill out our recruitment form at bit.ly slash mcrecruit. Uh, apply for admission at marietta.edu slash apply. And then uh, fill out a second form to actually schedule the tryout. So bit.ly slash mcesport tryout. Uh, 
Now, we will have other tryouts uh, in March and in April. So that we did have ours for today. If, uh, well, if you weren't able to make it to this one, um, you can check out the form and fill out something for one of our two trial events in March. We have one, I think it's going to be online on March 6th. And then we'll have an in-person tryout during Marietta College's uh, Navy Blue and White Day. Uh, I would suggest that you sign up sooner rather than later because we only have so many eSports scholarships that we can give out. So as much as I would love to give an eSports scholarship to every single person who's interested, uh, we're not able to do that. So if you wait too long, we may end up saying, sorry, we, we gave out to all of our scholarships. So uh, make sure that you fill out sooner than later. Uh, we do have QR codes set up. So if you're not able to type out uh, the link, uh, you can always put your phone up to the screen and get the QR code and fill out the information from there. Uh, you can try out for a scholarship before applying for admission. However, you will not be awarded a scholarship until you have been accepted to attend Marietta College. But, all right. So uh, right now the current status is we have some players uh, in the lobby for Lewis. Marietta's already in there. That looks like they're going to be on the blue side. I'm not so sure where everyone for... Well, there's a couple of people in the spectator. So I'm going to guess that Lewis is waiting for one more person. That is, that is my guess. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and get audio set up here so that way I don't miss anything. But I think once the last person for uh, Lewis gets in, then we will have uh, this game underway. Yeah, I know the team was meeting uh, before the uh, the match and just kind of reviewing things that uh, that happened during Thursday's match with Manchester. Uh, so hopefully there were some things that the team was able to take away from that. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see uh, how this game goes. And also need to remind myself, I'm going to try to get a prediction set up. Oh, this I forgot to do it earlier today, so I want to make sure. I'm going to set it up now, and then I'll make sure I'll time it so that it comes out uh, during Champion Select. So, which, by the way, we are trying to test out this new feature with. Um, yeah, yeah, we are trying to test out this new feature with the predictions. So channel points is not really a new thing, but we are we have enabled it recently. So you have a way in chat to be able to interact uh, with our stream. So just by watching, you automatically get channel points. Uh, if you're watching and you don't have a Twitch account, then I recommend that you go ahead and create a Twitch account so you can accumulate those channel points. Um, and then uh, with the predictions, you can then wager the some points for most of our predictions have been like who will win game one who will win game two so you'll be able to participate uh that way uh but you also get channel points if you follow our twitch channel you get channel points if you subscribe to our channel so in fact subscribing gives you all sorts of perks such as emotes and, and all sorts of good things looks like everyone is getting into the lobby trying to get into lcs order i believe well someone just jumped out so i'm not so sure what happened there but anyway as i was saying um so for subscribing to our Twitch, in fact, I'll go ahead and put the uh, image up for that. Where where did that go? It's here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. So yeah, I mean, uh, you can subscribe to our Twitch channel, get instant access to all of our VODs, you get custom emotes. So we kind of showed you a couple, a sample of some of the emotes that you have access to, courtesy of our communication and brand management department. And if you do not have uh, the capability of paying for a subscription, if you have Amazon Prime, then you can get uh, Prime Gaming for free, which would give you a free sub every month that you can choose to whichever Twitch channel you want. It does not automatically renew, though, so uh, you would have to remind yourself to uh, renew that uh, Prime Gaming subscription. I keep wanting to say Twitch Prime, but I know it's called Prime Gaming. Uh, people are just still talking in the the lobby chat. Um, okay, so I think everyone is in. I think. Uh, 
Okay, hold on. Hold on one sec. We got, we're working out a logistic here. Let me check something. We're, we're just double checking a roster thing here. We're going to take a quick break here just to check um, one thing on the rules. So we're going to be right back, folks.
All right, welcome back. Sorry for the delay, folks. Uh, we just had to double check to make sure everything was good. And we're going to be playing it out. They're already in champ select. So let me get this over to you guys. I'm um, still checking a couple things. So maybe uh, talking with the... Uh, oh, that's not even the right uh, thing here. Hold on. There we go. That's better. Once again, apologize for the delay, folks. But we just want to make sure everything was good here. So... Um, might be a little tricky for me to commentate while talking with, um, with, with some people. Okay, so it looks like Aurelian Soul uh, has been uh, been banned for Marietta. Fine. I don't need more enemies. Looks like Sin is going to be banned by Lewis. Looks like Cho'Gath is going to be banned by Marietta. Now, like, uh, <laughs> I keep saying Lyco, even though that's, that's our player. Uh, Lewis is uh, has banned out uh, Hecarim. Mary is going to take out Udir. I mean, Udir is uh, right now a very strong jungler. So uh, a good choice. If Relic isn't going to play it, then just take it out. I would expect maybe uh, Lewis to take out another of Relic's uh, jungle champions. And there's the Lilia band, so another uh, target towards Raelic. And Marion is going to first pick Seraphine, a great flex pick for the Pioneers. Can go mid, can go support. I've even seen bot Seraphine. And Lewis is going to go with the Olaf right away. Very aggressive jungler in the early game. Drops off near the, uh, the later portions of it though. But Lewis may be looking to try to win at 20 minutes. So now we'll see what they're going to take next. And they're going to go with the Alistar for support. Uh, very engaged, heavy support. We'll see how Marietta will re respond uh, to that. And it looks like we're going to go with Leona to counter the Alistar, so that's going to be a Seraphine, well, I shouldn't say, okay, now it's going to be a Seraphine mid if Brimstone's going to be taking this fortune. Oh no, actually they're going to take the Ezreal instead. And we're going to see a Zaya come out uh, from Lewis. It looks like additional targeting in the jungle where Kindred's going to be banned by Lewis. Orianna's going to be banned in the mid lane, so we'll not be playing that against the Seraphine. Finally, we're going to see the Graves ban. So, four bans targeting the jungle, trying to shut out Relic. So, that is going to limit his options. I haven't seen too many other things that he plays. I'm mean, sure he has something, but i just trying to remember what. Marius is going to take out the Darius as a big threat in the top lane.
it shouldn't be too surprised that they're going to maybe possibly pick lock in the Rakan, that synergy with the Zaya. Or no, actually, they're going to go with the Redekton. They're, they're, they're probably hovering over the Redekton, so I wouldn't be surprised if they picked that. Actually, no, wait, that doesn't make any sense. They already got Alistar. Why would they pick... Why would they pick... Um, Rakan if they already have Alistar? That would have been a huge misplay, actually, if they locked that in. And it looks like Lyco's going to be picking the Shen to go up against Redekton in the top lane. Redekton's very strong right now. But now we're going to see what Relic will go with for his jungle with most of the options taken out. I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting. Ooh! I see a Talia! Yes, we are, folks. We are going to see a Talia. I have seen Relic play this. Not often, but I'm sure he plays it a lot more than I see. And then... No, are, are they really going to pick the Rakan? They have, they cannot be picking the Rakan right now. Yeah, I was about to say that, that they already got their support, so it's going to be a Syndra going up against the, the Seraphine in the mid lane. All right, so at this point, we're just waiting for loadouts. And then uh, we just got to wait for another three minutes for the game to uh, actually start for us. So how's everyone doing? Once again, I want to apologize for its uh, delayed start. Um, we need to check some things on the rosters. I don't want to go over any details uh, on the stream. But just we just need to make sure it was okay to play, and we we got the green light from the admin, so we want to thank the admins for uh, for doing some investigating for us. But as we are waiting for game one of this best of three series, uh, let's go over a couple of reminders. I think I mentioned these earlier in the stream, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it again. So tomorrow is the as Marietta College's annual day of giving. So it is where we basically ask you for your support. Um, so first of all, we already thank you for those who are watching, who have ever donated or subscribed to our Twitch channel or followed. It is much appreciated. Uh, we want to thank all of those who have given any type of the gift, uh, any type of gift to the college to support our students, our faculty, our staff. Uh, I think we've seen the benefits of, of your generosity. So now we're asking see if you'd be willing to help us uh, once again. So uh, if you would like to make a contribution to support our students, faculty, and staff, uh, you can go to maria.edu slash day dash of dash giving, which uh, will provide all the information on how you can help support uh, Marietta College. I believe there are some incentives for giving a certain amount or maybe giving at certain times. I know some classes and some alumni are going to be doing matching donations. So Please be sure to take uh, take part of that. So whether you give to the, the general fund or to a department or an athletic team or even make a gift towards the esports program, we would we've appreciate all those who have made gifts have given gifts before and it's been a huge help for our esports program. But that is going on tomorrow. Speaking of things that are going on tomorrow, uh, we'll be broadcasting our uh, esports Ohio well our esports scholarship tournament. Uh, consisting of students that are part of Esports Ohio. We will be starting that at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so we'll be broadcasting several uh, Rocket League matches for you. I'm really excited to, uh, to see how that turns out. All the Esports Ohio students that are participating uh, will receive a $1,500 scholarship for participating if they attend Marietta College, and the winners will receive a $2,000 scholarship. So there are scholarships up for grabs in this tournament. Uh, so I uh, hope you check it out. If you are part of Esports Ohio, I hope you would... Uh, I uh, encourage you to 
possibly participate in our upcoming League of Legends and Overwatch tournaments. The uh, registration deadlines for that are next Friday for League of Legends and the following Friday uh, for Overwatch. Now, if you're not part of Esports Ohio and you're like, well, don't I get a chance to get a scholarship to play Esports Ohio College? Well, you still can. Uh, we do tryouts for our Esports teams. So if you're a high school senior and you're thinking about coming to Marietta College for eSports, get a hold of us and we can schedule a tryout for you and you may be able to earn some money as well. You don't have to participate in our eSports Ohio terms, especially if you're not from Ohio. You, you can't participate if you're, if you're not from Ohio. So uh, you can fill out our recruitment form to let us know that you would like more information about our eSports program. So you go to bit.ly slash mcrecruit uh, and then you would apply for admission at marietta.edu slash apply. And then you can go schedule a tryout at bit.ly slash mcesport tryout. Uh, if the upcoming days for tryouts don't work out for you, just get a hold get a hold of me, and we can uh, schedule a time that works best for you. All right, we are getting things loaded up for game one, so we should be ready in just a minute, folks. I know we've been waiting for almost 40 minutes now, but... Good things come to those who wait. And the game should be loading any second for me. Anytime now, game. Anytime. It's at 100% for me, so I don't know why it hasn't shown up just yet. All right, uh, let me get audio up and running here. There we go. And let's get this game underway, ladies and gentlemen. Marietta College versus Lewis University. Marietta is on the blue side, and Lewis will be on the red side. What will be the important matchup in this case? Ooh, tough predictions here. I am going to predict the mid lane is going to be the big matchup in this case. That's my prediction. Feel free to give your analysis predictions in the chat of which lane you think is going to be uh, the X factor in this matchup. But I think we're going to see that Oriana is a very good mid laner going up against uh, Yuki. But I think we're going to see the outcome of that lane helping with dictating the match. But all right, we're not seeing any invades, nothing out of the ordinary. Even itemization is identical among the sides except yuki's got two health potions where zindra does not just the the ring interesting choice not to get the uh get a couple of health pots that is going to allow yuki to sustain a little bit more in her lane and it looks everyone's going to be converging over to the right side uh, of the jungle mary will take the red buff and lewis will take their their blue buff And it looks like we have a DC, so we're going to have to give Miyuki a chance to connect back in. Which is kind of weird, because the other day she was having some connection issues where, like, at the beginning of the game, she would lose her connection. A summoner has reconnected. Alright, well, she has reconnected. So we should be starting back up in just a second. Just gotta give her a chance to load into the game. All right, we are back, folks. Hopefully, there'll be no more disconnects. Renekwa already getting some harassment in the lane and be pushing very hard. He's 
gonna have to fall back. He's already getting stunned. So hopefully he'll be able to get some CS under the, the tower. Yeah, but that stun, he's losing out on CS. So he's gonna be very careful not to be next to that Renekton. Just now hitting level two and Renekton's at level three. So we might be... Okay, now Shin's at level three. Okay. So maybe I was wrong about lane matchups. It might be the top lane where it's going to be the X Factor, but I guess we'll just see how things go. Still very early, only three minutes into the game. A lot of pings are coming out by Lewis. I think they're trying to predict where Raelic is, and they're going to predict wrong because here comes Raelic in the top lane. And Renekton is going to have to dash away. No summoners are used in the process. And pings are coming out warning about Olaf. Probably going to start heading towards that bot river. The Brimstone and Maxibu are going to have to be careful to not over push well, although they are getting kind of pushed down themselves so but they don't have any vision over at the tri brush so it'd be very gutsy to go for uh, a dive this early yeah, it looks like he's just going to secure the scuttle grab A lot of training on damage going on right now. Both are about half health. Yeah, and we're seeing Rayla getting that getting stunned early on to prevent that engage in the river. But that does give Mary a chance to at least get some vision over at that fry brush. another engagement here comes Raylick again ulti comes out for Shepard Johnson Viper's gonna have to flash away first blood will go to Lewis and Raylick's gonna try to get a pick but might be a little difficult does poke him down a little bit flashes away he's gonna continue to try to poke him and ends up going down himself and meanwhile Olaf and the rest of the bot lane for Lewis were able to secure the first dragon so a very rough start for the pioneers so first of all Renekton is getting a huge CS lead over Shen just being able to push him out Right now, seven minutes in the game, and Lewis does have about a 1.7 gold lead. Yeah, that's just if you look at CS differences across the board: 42 versus 24, 6, 52 versus 38, 62 versus 35. Relic will pop Ragnarok and try. Gosh, why am I saying Relic pop Ragnarok? That was the other day. AP pop Ragnarok. And Raelic got him down. 
Although Maxi did get end up getting the kill uh the killing blow with that. other major engages right now it does look like that uh Olaf will be going for the rift heroes they have complete vision control there so even if marietta knew that it was going on they wouldn't be able to do much to contest it unfortunately Looks like maybe looking at a three person dive in the top lane. I don't think there's much that LIGO can do about it. And they just pop everything. They pop all their ultis to take him out and try to push down this first tower. And even use the Rift Herald on. They want to get first tower. Mary tried to chase down AP, but he is going to flash away. in the game and with those dives and the tower pushes Lewis is taking uh, a pretty considerable lead about a 3.2 3.3k gold lead although we may be seeing a gauge in the bot lane with Rayleigh trying to set up and support myself a flash away Maxio Paparoli and then we get a charge by Alistar so it looks like the, uh, everyone's going to get away unscathed although Syndra may be looking to re-engage Brimstone's going to catch it, though. And we see everyone for Lewis down over by Ocean Drake. Now, Laika does have his teleport in. I don't know how much he's going to be able to do, though, because he's really behind on farm. But I think Marietta's going to have to let this go.
Now we're seeing, looks like Agreki is going to try to get the jump onto Yuki. He's going to pop the ulti and the, the charm. It's already at less than health, taking turret shots, and Greylick will get the shutdown. It closes the gold gap to about 3k gold. And now we're seeing a possible engage onto AP, but he's going to get away. Rack now we're seeing several ultis flying, trying to go after Syndra. Has to flash away with just about less than, I'd say about 15% of her health. It looks like Zion might get caught. He uses the blast cone with the ignite ticks, and I think maybe we're gonna get away safely. Actually, there were no ignite ticks. My bad. Now we're looking at about a 2,500 gold difference between the teams. So Marion is trying to close that gap. Brimstone is taking a very nice uh, lead in CS versus Support Peasant. But we are seeing the uh, the CS differential widen in the mid lane. Yuki at 74 versus Oriana X at 123. Let's see, Syndra is going to get slowed a little bit. Rayla takes a huge hit from or from uh, Syndra's ulti, but will not go down. Seeing some training going on in the the top lane. Like, we just got to be very careful though. If we take a look, I mean, they are even on levels, but let's just take a look at gold differences right now. Fifty-seven hundred gold for Kepper Johnson, while Lyco only has about thirty-six hundred gold. So that's a that's almost a full item difference between the two of them. So right now, Marina has to be careful individually in their respective lanes. Most of Lewis are ahead in the respective lanes. In fact, the only one that, well, actually, bot lane's doing pretty well. Brimstone is ahead by about 700 gold. Tries to get to engage onto. Yeah, so Yuki can actually try to get the jump onto Oriana. It's kind of weird to say the name's Oriana X, even though it's a Syndra. I'm going to try to say Syndra so there's any confusion. But uh, they try to get the jump on the Syndra, does not quite get it. Now we're seeing Olaf trying to get caught a little bit. And they may be looking at Engage there. Syndra will use the ulti onto Raelic once again. Does not go down. And they're going to start that Rift Herald. They should be able to get it. But Varianna may be looking to collapse on them. And Marianna's going to try to get the jump. Two-person knockoff. Ulti's going to come out. Michael's working trying to get it without. Rift Herald is secured by Lewis. And Syndra does take out Shen. Ragnarok is going to come out for AP. Going to take down Yuki. So it's a 2 for 0 plus Rift Herald. And Max is going to try to flash out of there. But Syndra is there to take him down. Raylan will get one kill. But it's still a 3 for 1 in favor of Lewis.
All right, so Lewis is going to be starting off the Infernal Drake. We're now 18 minutes into the game, and Lewis is up by about 35, 36. 600 gold it looks like so a pretty sizable lead Samaria's going to try to get the jump onto Alistar. Great engage by Leona. Relic is going to be trying to poke him down. A great stun all by Luna, and they do secure a kill. So that's how Mary's going to get back from this. The team fight's probably not advisable, because right now, Renekton is very strong. Syndra is pretty strong, too. Olaf strong-ish. But if they can like, find one person and pick them off and turn these 5v5s into 45 Chris had to be careful there. Sandra's trying to get the jump and does end up finishing him off. But yeah, if Marianne can get these like single picks and then get out, then that's how they're going to slowly work their way back into the game. working on trying to keep despite the fact that they are behind they're doing a pretty good job of keeping up vision in their jungle because when you fall behind it's very easy for the opposing team to uh, take control of your jungle making it very difficult to be able to maneuver around so got to give credit to marietta for being able to maintain at least some vision control in their red jungle now their blue jungle it is pretty heavily warded uh, by lewis He's trying to get a little something onto Alistar. Not doing a whole lot of damage, though, unfortunately, at being a 0-1-2. The Renekton is getting spotted out, but once again, I think it's going to be hard for Marietta to engage on it because he's very, very, very strong. And the Talia ult's going to be coming out and trying to catch onto Alistar and the Charm and the knockup. They're popping everything on this cow and he is going to go to the Slaughterhouse, folks. The only downside to that was three ultis were used to get that catch. And now they're going to try to catch Zaya and Olaf before they can back away and just barely escapes. Try to catch 
Renekton is going to just dash away, though. Infernal Drake is up in five seconds, so everyone needs to get in position to be ready for a possible team fight. Lewis is already there. Marion is starting to converge over there. But Marion's going to be very careful. Lewis is up by a lot of gold. Yeah, in fact, that ulti is really pops in the hour, the, uh, the stopwatch just in time. They're trying to pour down onto Rag the Ragnarok Olaf, but Seraphine's going to fall first, and Leos, that's two down already for Marietta. And Renekton takes out, it's a four for zero. And right now, Lewis is just very strong. And there's not a whole lot that Marietta can do about it. And they will secure Infernal Drake. And that's their fourth Drake already. And they're going to go straight for Baron. At this 20, 25 minutes of the game, we're looking at almost 11,000 gold difference. It's almost as if Lewis is playing better than what their ranks saying they are. Just an observation. We're seeing a huge double wombo combo there by Lewis. Takes out Leona. Ezreal comes out. The stopwatch will come out for Sindra to keep her alive. Actually, it's the hourglass. So it's a two for one trade, a three for two though. Zaya taking out Talia. So with the Baron and the, the, the Drake buffs, they're already pretty much closing in onto the base. This will be back when Mary is going to try to chase down Olaf. It's going to pop in Ragnarok to try to stay alive. And Alistar there is to body shield. And Leon's going to get stunned. And Luce is going to re engage onto Maxi. Going to pop the ulti and the charm. And Rail is going to fall. Mary tries to get the re engage. Brimstone's going to be knocking some damage. But Cinder's there for a double kill, a triple kill. Brimstone will get the shutdown, but they're going to have to get away because Olaf is still very, very tanky. And Yuki's the only one that's left, has to flash away, and they're going to be diving right on top of her. And that will be the ace. And Lewis is going to go straight for the base. Super minions are already on the Nexus Towers. Leona and Raylick are trying to, try to defend the Nexus. 
but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Right now, I think Mary is just delaying the inevitable. And with that, Lewis will take game one. Just a dominating performance by them. They're, they're playing a lot better than what's anticipated, that's for sure. But all right, we'll get the score here uh, updated. So Lewis does take the first game. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break and we'll get back into game two just a little bit. So don't go away. You're watching Marietta College Esports. Have you heard what happened to those with curious minds? They packed up, broke free of conventions. These prospectors of knowledge are blazing a new trail, joining the long line of those who sought adventure and prepared for anything. This is the time. This is the place. Bring forth a pioneer.
All right, welcome back. Uh, we're getting champion select already up, so let me get the overlay set up here. It's like they just hit R and they immediately start without any warning. This time, Lewis is on the blue side and Marietta will be on the red side. But right now, Senna's being banned again, so we'll see if Lewis is going to use the same bans from game one. The Railing Soul is going to be banned once again by Marietta. Hacker is going to be banned. So far, same bans. I don't remember what Marietta banned next. Okay. This time they're going to ban the Seraphine. Interesting choice. So they're not going to go with it this time. They're going to try something a little different. But they don't want to give Lewis the chance to use it. She is Their pretty good. Is wise. And there's the Udyr ban. Okay, I remember Marietta banning Udyr. But this time, Lewis is going to ban it instead of Lilia. So that makes you wonder, are they going to take Lilia as their first pick? Or maybe take another jungler? Wait. No, actually, Raelic's going to Or Marietta's going to be banning it. So I guess Raelic is fine, like, saying, I don't... I'm not going to play Lilia. And they're going to first pick that Olaf, this very strong performance in game one. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Lewis just went with a very similar composition that they did in game one just because of their strong performance. But we'll see if Raelic picks a, a jungler here just so he doesn't get any more banned out during the second phase. And it looks like he's going to go with the Kha'Zix. Oh, Kha'Zix is so much fun. But he's like, okay, you're going to ban me out? I'm going to take something right now so you can't ban any more of my junglers. And they're going to give Yuki the Ari right from the get-go. Interesting choice to blind pick the mid lane, but I guess they're not too concerned about who Luz will be going up against. So here's the All-Star. And this time, Orianna will be playing Orianna. At least now we won't have to worry about that confusion. And we're going to see... Are we going to see a Yasuo? Oh, this could be an... This could be interesting right here. That could be a Brimstone Yasuo. Or no, it's going to be the Lulu instead in support for, for Maxi. Unless it was going to be a Yasuo support... That'd be weird. So Mary is gonna try to the bane out next. And they're gonna pick out the Zaya, so they won't have to play against that. So I was th I don't wanna say I was thinking it, but I was thinking it. So I and Lewis bans out the Shen. Interesting that they did not want to go up against it. They may be still thinking Rick. And Mary's going to go with the Misfortune. So it makes me wonder, are they going to pick the Renekton? 
In fact, if Luce doesn't ban Redacted, Marietta might just take it themselves. But no, all the focus bans are going to be in the bot lane trying to ban out as the uh, the pools. And oh, 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 Brimstone's bringing out the vein this time. Blind picking the vein. This is an interesting call. We were talking the other day about uh, Brimstone maybe considering he should have brought out the vein instead of uh, something else like the Kaiza or the Misfortune. So they're going to lock that in. And that's going to allow Lewis to take the Renekton. And then they can choose what they want to play into it. So the only concern I have with this order is that Marietta got some picks that they wanted, but it does allow them to get counter picks. So both mid and ADCs are going to be able to counter pick what Marietta selected. And they're going to play the Lucian into the vein. Now, what does Lyco want to play into the Renekton? Jen's taken out. I don't know. I, I would think that they should, Mary, I should have went with the Renekton first. Looks like he may be going with the Orn this time. And I don't want to forget those predictions. All right, so they're just going to be waiting for the loadouts, waiting for the game to start up after the spectator delay. But yeah, so in this case, it seems like Mary is kind of going with the uh, pick what you feel comfortable with. Because just the way Lewis was playing in game one, they're a very skilled team. And it's going to be hard to necessarily out macro. So the way to win in this case would be to try to win on a 1v1 basis. So trying to pick uh, champions that they can lane well with, they can try to win with. And that seems to be the approach that they're going to go with uh, in this case. But all right, so while we're waiting, we'll go over a couple of quick announcements. So we'll take a look at the uh, the upcoming match schedule for this weekend. So after today, we have one more match for you, and that's going to be tomorrow where our Overwatch team will be playing against Lords University. Uh, that'll be at 8.30 p.m., so hopefully you'll be back uh, for this. Uh, our Overwatch team has gone up against some very good teams in the JLEC, and Lords is among the best that the, the conference has to offer. So it is going to be an uphill battle. The team has been practicing hard, so we'll see uh, how things go with that. Also, tomorrow, there, there's so much stuff going on tomorrow, folks. I mean, really, there is so many things. So, I mean, but even early in the day, we have our high school esports scholarship tournament for Rocket League. So we are providing a tournament for those that are part of Esports Ohio. So we will be broadcasting the entire tournament starting at 10 a.m., we are anticipating that we'll be done by about 2 p.m. So it's not going to be like all, all day. Uh, so definitely come back to, to check that out and uh, cheer on the, the high school teams as they compete for scholarships. They receive $1,500 scholarship for just participating and $2,000 scholarship for the players on the winning team. Next Sunday, not tomorrow, but the following Sunday, we will have our League of Legends tournament. Uh, so the registration deadline for that is going to be on Friday for Esports Ohio students. Uh, and then... On Sunday, the following Sunday will be our Overwatch uh, tournament for Esports Ohio. Now, if you're a high school senior and you are interested in a scholarship, but you're not uh, a part of Esports Ohio, you can still schedule a tryout, an individual tryout for a possible scholarship. All you have to do is fill out our recruitment form at bit.ly slash mcrecruit, apply for admission at marietta.edu slash apply, and then you can schedule a tryout at bit.ly slash mcesport tryout. Uh, but yeah, once again, there are a limited number of scholarships, so I would recommend that you try out sooner rather than later. Also tomorrow is Valentine's Day, but it is Marietta College's Day of Giving. So 
I definitely recommend you check that out. You can go, for more information, you can go to marietta.edu slash day dash of dash giving. Um, but uh, all of the, the gifts and donations uh, towards Mary College have been greatly appreciated. I, I speak on behalf of not only as the esports coach, but as a faculty member that uh, the public support is definitely appreciated. Uh, our faculty and students have been able to do a lot because of what you uh, provide for the college. The op I, I love seeing the opportunities that we're able to give our students. It's because uh, people like you who uh, watch and donate to be able to make these things happen. Uh, so you can give towards the general fund for scholarships, give to a department, uh, you can give to a, a, an athletic team, you can even make a gift uh, towards our uh, esports program and try to provide more opportunities for uh, our students. So I uh, just speak for everyone where we appreciate uh, all that uh, you've done for us. So hopefully you can make a contribution tomorrow during that, during the, the day of giving. But all right, uh, everything is starting to load up. So we should have the game here soon. As soon as I uh, uh, get fully loaded and get the UI uh, ready to go. In fact, I should probably get the stream deck ready for it. So as soon as just get chat and everything here set up, get audio going. And all right, here we go, folks. Game two of this best of three series. Lewis is on in the blue side and Marion will be on the red side this time. And Marion is pinging all over the place. Maybe anticipating a possible invade. It looks like Marietta is going to be kind of converging a little bit around. Well, not so much converging, but kind of checking for any possible invades. Olaf's going to get spotted out there. No, no, no additional information. Minions have spawned. Yeah, so it looks like, um, no, everyone's gonna start on the left side of the jungle. Right side of the jungle again. Sorry. I cannot distinguish my left from my right, apparently. Which one looks like an owl. I think the matchup we want to take a look at this time is I want to see this Vayne Lucian matchup. I haven't seen Brimstone on a lot of Vayne, but I know he likes the Vayne. So I want to see how that plays a role. Seeing once again Renek and harassing Orn quite a bit in that top lane already at half health. Does have a corrupting potion, so that will help with uh, being able to sustain. So I think you use the charge there to, to get some health back up. But definitely getting harassed down already very low in health. Has to use flash to get underneath the tower. Yeah, definitely having some trouble down there. Already getting knocked up. Although, Kemper does take a turret hit. But Lyco's going to have to be very careful. He needs to be able to catch this wave and then back out. 
He's definitely going to be losing some CS uh, with that push. It's still too early to tell about things going on. I mean, there is a about a two to three hundred gold difference between the two and uh, schools. It's really just about CS difference. Interesting that neither top layer uses their teleport to get back into lane. So that could be a factor later on for possible engages. actually used the teleport to get back into lane and here we got a little bit of trading going on that top lane again although the cs differential isn't as big this time i mean it's about a 10 cs difference and relic was looking for a possible gank and ward's gonna catch it not even gonna get a summoner out of it and that's gonna allow Lewis to go down to the Cloud Drake and take it because, well, if, if Ray looks up there, then they know they can freely take the, uh, the Drake. Now they're going, well, if Ray looks gonna take my, my blue camp, well, I'm gonna take his blue camp. We see Lyco trying to get the, char the charge and the knock up onto Renekton, and here comes Raelic, has to pop the ulti and double dash. And is Raelic gonna loop around again? Like, here comes the Orn ulti. It does catch Renekton, but unfortunately, it's just too far away for Raelic to get the leap onto him. You know, we do see Caution Flash going out into the bot lane. Maybe looking... Well, I mean, they knew that Relic was up in the top lane, but... So, I don't know. Maybe because they don't know where Yuki is. Well, now they're going to know where she is because of that control ward. Seven and a half minutes into the game, and we're only looking at just about a thousand gold difference. I say only a thousand seven and a half minutes, but considering how things went with game one, that's not too bad. No kills yet. That's the interesting thing. There's been a couple of gank attempts in top lane, but not a whole lot there. Brimstone doing pretty well with CS. But mid and top lane are struggling a little bit. Yeah, so far all the action has been in that top lane trying to make sure that Lyco does not get fall too far behind maybe seeing a possible gauge there and I think Kemper Johnson is going to be respecting it a little bit because it seems like a lot of attention has been in that top lane 
So every time Raikou gets engaged, he has to wonder, is Raelic nearby? Is he going to try to get the jump on him? Things are coming out for the Rift Herald. They may suspect that Olaf is on it, but he's not there. Lyco is going to try to get some damage onto Renekton. and pops the ulti. He's going to dive right in. And Oriana will take the kill, take first blood. But the turn hit will take him down. Got just enough damage so that last hit would finish him off. So it is a one for one, but the bonus go will go to Lewis because it is first blood. Meanwhile, Olaf is going to be working on the Rift Herald, but here comes Relic and Miyuki. And Maximu isn't too far behind either. The charm is going to connect. Pops Ragnarok to cancel out the charm. And now Marianne is going to look to secure this Rift Herald. Because Orn is back. He actually teleported on that control. A great control ward placement there by Raelic earlier. That allowed him to teleport right in there to help in case it turned to a fight. Now Brimstone's got to be careful. He actually has to pop his flash. A great stun there too. To prevent Alistar from charging. Now we see Marion is starting to converge a little bit towards the river. The uh, Infernal Drake's going to be up in less than 30 seconds. And the problem is, Lyco doesn't have his teleports. But Raelic has caught Oriana. He's going to try to get the jump on her. Gets Charmed. And that's a huge kill there for Marietta. And maybe their opportunity to go for the dragon. But Raelic's going to have to leap away or try to avoid a tower hit. He's fine. He knows what he's doing. He's actually going to use that Rift Herald to put some pressure onto the mid tower while they go for the Infernal Drake. Or they may be looking to catch Alistar. Or they'll just kill a ward. They'll just kill a ward. Okay, well, Miners will start from the Infernal Drake, but they got to be careful. Oriana is back, has respawned, but they are trying to burn down this Drake. Marietta will secure it. Will there be engaged by Lewis? No, Marietta will get out. So, so far, Marietta's doing pretty well with the, with the macro play. Lewis is still up in gold, but now it's about seven, 800 gold difference. So they're, they're working their way back into this. So if they can keep this even, then they may have a chance to go to game three, folks. I'm saying there is, there's a chance. Looks like Ray is going to try to get the jump onto to Olaf trying to steal his raptors and he's gonna actually do it. It seems like Lewis's strategy is to deny as much camps as possible from Raelic to take him out of the game. He's going to steal the red buff as well. Looking to try to get the catch onto oh, it looks like Orn might be caught. There might not be much Mary can do about it. Nuki and Raelic are trying to get in there, trying to jump off the ulti. And unfortunately does not able to connect. Had to use the stopwatch to stay alive, but was not able to break out in time to be able to knock the uh, the ram or whatever you want to call it. See, and that is just not being aware of where Lewis was at that point. Yes, yeah, so and now Olaf is gonna well, he's gonna back away. But Luce already has a couple of wards deep into Marietta's jungle. That does widen the gold lead a little bit by about 1500 gold. So if Marietta can get another kill, there is a bounty on the Olaf, so the shutdown gold would be beneficial. Soon fall. 
fall. Looks like one of the wards is going to get caught out by Marietta. They'll take care of that. So we're seeing a possible engage. A great stun there by Brimstone. Teleport's coming in for Muki. Actually, no, that wasn't Muki. That was... Oh, no. It got uh, got delayed. Muki tried to teleport in and got stunned and canceled out the teleport. And we're seeing some training going into the top lane. Vernak is still doesn't have any kills this time, but if we look at gold differential, let's take a look here. Still considerably ahead, 1,200 gold over Lyco, and even a level head. See Olaf still trying to harass Raylan's jungle. Gonna get charmed and polymorphed. But he's gonna get right back into the fight. Teleport comes out, but it might be too late. Calling is gonna take out Brimstone. So it's now a 3v5. Has to flash away. Olaf's gonna get the kill and Max is going down. So it's a 4 for 1 in favor of Lewis. That teleport thing was just a little too late. Marion was not prepared for it. Was, uh, Brimstone was out of position. Yuki's going to get the charm and take Orion down to about half health. But it doesn't look like she's going to get anything. So that's going to widen that lead that Lewis was looking for. And in great timing too. This mountain trades up in 20 seconds. They're going to start converging and preparing for a, a very quick team fight. The one thing, though, is they only have two ultis ready, whereas Maria does have three. So if there were a team fight over at the Dragon Pits, which I don't even know if Maria is going to go for it. Braylix on the other side of the map. So I think they're going to concede the Mountain Drake, but then again, Lewis isn't going for it yet either. Well, now they're starting to converge towards it. It looks like Raelic's strategy is, well, give up Mountain Drake, but we'll take the Rift Herald instead. So at this point, the gold lead has expanded to over 5,000, about a 5,300 gold difference. That is a very considerable lead uh, at, excuse me, 17 and a half minutes into the game. And this time, a lot of it comes down to the Olaf. Olaf is one of those where if he gets ahead early on, he can run down the lane. And at 3-0-1 and being considerably ahead in CS compared to Relic, he can run down the lane. So it looks like Merida is going to try to at least get the mid tower while Lewis is split. But the problem. And they'll use Rift Handle to try to finish off the tower because they didn't really have any minions there to continue their push. But they do secure it. And actually, that's the first turret 
Ragnarok does come out. Relic is already very low. He's not going to make it. He'll have to get away. And Ari's going to have to get out. Brimstone was maybe looking for something, but the fight was pretty much over before they got there. So they will get first tower, but they will lose someone in the process. And Lewis will take a tower themselves. That still keeps up their goal lead by almost 6,000 gold at 19 minutes into the game. Yeah, hate to see that. That is... Oriana with the flash shockwave, and that was enough to pretty much one-shot Miyuki. That is a very deadly Oriana. So at this point, it's kind of back to what we were talking before in game one. Marietta is going to have to find the picks. There are bounties on Olaf and Oriana. So if Marietta can get those picks, then that will give them opportunities to get back. But that's going to be a challenge. Olaf is 4-0-1. Oriana is 3-1-5. If we look at the... Well, they're going to try to get Oriana, but yeah, she's going to get away. But yeah, if we look at the gold differentials, Olaf has almost 8,000 gold. Oriana has 8,300 gold. That is a substantial amount of gold compared to what Relic and Yuki have, respectively. So they are very, very beefy. You might not even be able to take them down with a 2v1 case. You might have to do a 3v1. Mountain Drake's gonna be up in about 35-ish seconds. So I would expect maybe a possible fight there, but once again, Mary Day really needs a pick before the, the dragon comes up if they want to be able to, to take the Mountain Drake. They really can't afford to concede any more Drakes. Olaf will get charmed, but not too concerned. Wow, that shockwave. It just deleted Vayne. So at that point, there's not much Mary can do. They cannot contest this Drake now. And even Red's gonna have to get, receive uh, Lulu's ulti and heal just to stay alive. So at this point, Lewis is up by almost 8,000 gold. So that is that is very difficult to come back from. Not impossible, but it is very difficult. Merida is just not finding the opportunities that they need. They need to get those picks. But Alistar is doing actually a pretty good job with protecting the Olaf and Oriana. Merida's going to try to get the jump onto Olaf, but Pops Ragnarok and has to leap away. So at least get the ulti out of him. Another shockwave comes out, takes out Brimstone, and Lulu is extremely low in health from that. That is just a dangerous uh, ulti. Great knockup there by Orn. 
Renekton's going to have to pop his ult to survive. But here comes Alistar with his charge. Trying to get back onto it. And they're going to take down Relic and Lyco. But the rest of Lewis was able to roam up and save their, uh, their player. But right now, Lewis is going to be taking control of the jungle, pretty much denying Marietta of all vision. If we were to look at just ward placements, so this is what Marietta sees right now. They have a couple of wards, but not a whole lot, versus compared to the vision that Lewis has. So they got a couple of wards in Marietta's jungle, but... Okay, it looks like Marietta's trying to reestablish some vision. Because you you don't want to lose vision in your jungle when you're behind. Looks like at least one more controller is gonna be spotted out. And it looks like Alistar Lucian may be looking to try to get. Pick on Yuki. He's trying to use the charm and dash away. And Rayleigh is looking to get a jump onto... Onto Alistar. Lucian pops the calling. Does not finish off Rayleigh, but he is very low in health. And that's going to allow Lewis to start up on the, the Baron. Mariana is looking to try to surround him, but they're going to have to respect that ball. Otherwise, that happens. And Lewis will secure the Baron, and that's going to be go mode for Oriana taking out Brimstone. And meanwhile, Renekton is in the top lane, harassing uh, both Lyco and Miyuki. Pops the ulti to try to stay alive. He may end up going down, but... Or maybe not. The rest of the team has followed through. And they're going to keep Renekton from dying. So now Lewis is going to rotate around to the mid lane. Relic is trying to get a stop in, but I don't think there's too much it can do. But they... With the type of gold lead they have, almost 14, 15,000 gold difference. Marietta's throwing everything they got, and they still can't take down the Alistar or the Olaf. Ragnarok does get popped. Vayne does get the shutdown, so that is a kill, but what will they lose in the process? They lose the mid inhibitor tower, but not quite the inhibitor. Mountain Drake is up, so Lewis will start to rotate down the tank it. And meanwhile, Marietta is going to have to try to fend off the minions as they approach the base. Oops. Sorry about that. So there we go, finishing off the, uh, the Mountain Drake. Lewis is going to be backing out and with three Mountain Drake buffs. Inhibitors and the remaining towers are going to go down very, very quickly. So I think Lewis is going to be rotating to the top lane. They're going to let the super minions in the bot lane keep pressure there so that way they can focus their attention on the top lane and try to finish the game through there. Barrier is going to be looking to try to defend, but it's a 5v3. 
Not the engage they really need. They're gonna take out Relic. And they're gonna be looking for more. They're gonna They're gonna try to flash in. And they're gonna use the Baron Pattern minions to take down the top inhibitor turret. And they're just gonna continue asserting their dominance into Marietta's base, taking out the inhibitor. A shockwave catches too. Lulu will go down. Brimstone's gonna get stunned. And the only one's left is Muki. And they will finish her off. And that's gonna be it, folks. Marietta will take it. Will fall to Lewis zero to two, and it looks like spectator mode has, um, yeah, it looks like spectator mode did freeze up again. It's it's a little bit of a bug. I think it's whenever if someone's left the game or I don't know or maybe the host leaves the game. Not just sure what it is, uh, but it's pretty obvious that uh, Lewis did take the series uh, two to zero. So we will go ahead and give that. So yeah, I mean, I don't think necessarily Mariana did anything like wrong. I mean, there were some engages there that were probably not the best, but it just came down to individually. Lewis was they're, they're just very strong. Like, like their top lane or mid lane uh, are very good players, and even their jungler, like all, like all three of them were basically able to carry uh, both these games. So that is going to be it for us today. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Uh, so just as a reminder, we do have more matches for you tomorrow. So we will be broadcasting uh, our high school Rocket League tournament starting at 10 a.m. In fact, after this, I'm going to get the information to the schools so uh, they have all that information. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow evening, our Overwatch team will be playing against Lords University at uh, 8.30 p.m. So... For all the latest information, what's going on with Marietta College Esports, please be sure to follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at Marietta Esports. You can check out all of our matches from our previous broadcast at bit.ly slash Marietta Esports. So thank you all for watching, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.